Particles with opposite charges attract one another. We can view this by saying that the positive particles that are far away from the negative particle have a higher potential energy, just as in the case of gravitational potential energy. Particles with the same charge repel one another. We again can view this as a case of potential energy. Although gravitational fields affect all objects in the same way, electric fields have an opposite effect on positive particles than they do on negative particles. From a negative particle's point of view, the potential energy throughout space is flipped upside down as compared to a positive particle's point of view. Every charged particle contributes to shaping the electric potential energy at each point in space. The effect of each particle adds together. Suppose we have charged particles that are trapped inside a container. The charged particles will move to the edges of the container, causing the electric potential energy to be the same everywhere inside the container. If a container with charged particles experiences an external electric field, the charged particles inside the container will react by again moving in such a way so as to cause the electric potential energy to be the same everywhere inside the container. The charged particles inside the container will react by again moving in such a way so as to cause the electric potential energy to be the same everywhere inside the container. In a metal conductor, the positively charged particles are always fixed at one spot and unable to move. But the negatively charged particles are free to wander around. When the metal conductor experiences an external electric field, one side of the metal will end up having more negative particles than positive particles and develop a net negative charge. The other side of the metal will end up having more positive particles than negative particles and develop a net positive charge. Therefore, the effect is the same as in the example of charged particles inside a container.
the electric potential energy is the same everywhere in the metal. In an electric circuit, the negatively charged particles flow through metal wires. Metal wires that are directly connected to each other with metal connections are all at the same electric potential. The difference between the electric potential energy of two points of a circuit is what we call the voltage. When a switch closes, it causes the two different parts of a circuit that it connects to to be at the same potential energy. The number of charged particles that pass by each second is what we refer to as the current. When electricity was first discovered, it was not known that it is the negatively charged particles that move through wires and it was incorrectly assumed that it's the positive particles that are moving in the opposite direction. The convention for how we describe the electric current's direction was never updated. And we therefore still refer to this situation as if it is the positive particles that are flowing in the opposite direction. Much more detailed information about voltage, current and electric circuits is available in the other videos on this channel.
factors on which the resistance of a conductor depends. Activity Take a cell, an ammeter, a nichrome wire of length L and 2L and copper wire of length L. Procedure Connect cell, ammeter, plug key with connecting wire in series and leave the gap between the free ends of wires. Complete the circuit with nichrome wire of length L between X and Y. Now plug the key. Note the ammeter reading. Say I1 is equal to 2A. Now complete the circuit with nichrome wire of length 2L. Note the ammeter reading. I2 is equal to 1A. We can say that I1 is greater than I2. We can see that resistance of the conductor is depends on the length. Now complete the circuit with thicker nichrome wire of length L. Observe the ammeter reading. Say I3 is equal to 4A. We can say that resistance depends on area of cross section. Now complete the circuit with copper wire of a length L and same thickness equal to nichrome wire. And observe the ammeter reading, say I4 is equal to 3A. We can say that I4 is greater than I1. We can say that resistance is depends on nature of its material. Thus, resistance of a uniform metallic conductor is directly proportional to its length L and inversely proportional to area of cross section A. From 1 and 2 are proportional to L by A. Therefore, R equal to rho into L by A. Here rho is proportionality constant called electric resistivity of the material of the conductor. The SI unit of resistivity is ohm meter. The metals and alloys have low resistivity in the range of 10 to the power of minus 8 ohm meter to 10 to the power of minus 6 ohm meter. For insulators like rubber and glass have resistivity of the order of 10 to the power of 12 ohm meter to 10 to the power of 17 ohm meter. The alloys don't oxidize or burn readily at high temperatures. For this, we can use in heating device like electric iron, toaster, bulb, etc. Whereas, copper and aluminium are used for power transmission lines.